started work on the Cortina. Oh, hi, I'm Stella and welcome to 30 Books. On my channel, I buy and review Australian books to support the Australian publishing industry and of course, Australian writers. Thanks for all the wonderful support that you gave me on my first video, all the likes, and for the people who subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Keep those recommendations coming. Also, 30 Books now has a Facebook page, so just go to 30 Books, T-H-I-R-T-Y, so it's spelt out. This time round, I have three more books for you. And my first book is The Erratics by Vicky LaVu Harvey. Now this book won this year's Stella Prize and it was also shortlisted for the New South Wales Premier Prize. It's non-fiction, it's a memoir, and it charts the six years LaVu Harvey and her sister intermittently spent caring for their aging parents in Canada. LaVou Harvey lives in Australia and goes to Canada about once or twice a year. There's a catch though. LaVou Harvey and her sister have essentially been estranged from their parents for about 20 years and it gets better. LaVou Harvey's mother doesn't even acknowledge she has children. She says that she had one daughter who died quite some time ago. On their first trip back to the family home, they discover their mother has been starving herself and also starving their father. Their mother has broken her hip and is admitted to hospital. So the sisters spend their time cleaning out the family home, taking care of their father, setting him up for some at-home care and trying to get their mother committed to hospital full-time or full-time care. It becomes clear that she has mental health issues, which LaVou Harvey alludes to and cites a couple of childhood examples of her mother's rather cruel nature. She doesn't dwell on the aspect of her childhood too much, but it's definitely threaded through the through the novel, through the book. Now, if nothing else, this book will make you feel better about your own family, but there is so much more to this compelling memoir. Despite the subject matter, there is something weirdly beautiful about this story, and LaVou Harvey has a very wicked and droll sense of humour. As she faces a rather depressing and confronting set of circumstances, I don't think it's inappropriate at all, but I think it's a perfectly natural response when things become so surreal. I mean, it's not to say that LaVou Harvey pokes fun at mental illness and obviously the suffering her mother is going through. It's awful for everyone concerned. The other thing about this book, it's beautiful depiction of the Canadian landscape that LaVou Harvey is clearly connected to and loves and she has a reverence to it. She knows this landscape intimately and I wonder how much or if our senses are more attuned to returning to our, the place that we grew up with with fresh eyes. Needless to say, I loved this book. It didn't take me long to read. It's a rather slim book. And did you read it? I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. It is out by Fourth Estate, which is an imprint of Harper Collins. And I bought my copy from Readings in St Kilda. I promise I'm not on a commission from them. I just seem to stumble into their stores. I bought mine for $22.99, which means the author gets about just over $2. And you might think, well, what can you buy for $2? I'll tell you what, a stick of deodorant. So you might be broke, but you won't have BO. Now, my next book is 
Dark Emu, Aboriginal Australia and the Birth of Agriculture by lecturer, researcher and award-winning author Bruce Pascoe. Pascoe is of Bunurong and Tasmanian Aboriginal heritage. Now Dark Kemu came out in about 2014 and it's still really being talked about and growing in popularity. I think this book is the one book that every Australian or non-Indigenous person should read, especially those of us who were taught a very specific history, a whitewashed history of, of Australia, or as Pasco calls it, in the fog about the history of the land. And that fog is that Aboriginal people before colonisation were mere hunter-gatherers. In this book, Pasco details evidence of agriculture, of engineering and of game management. Next to archaeological findings and oral history, much of the evidence comes from the journals and diaries of early explorers such as Sturt and colonial farmers and settlers. And they were often amazed at the sophistication, extent and beauty of Aboriginal architecture and construction. And this includes houses, dams, weirs and fish traps. Pascoe discusses what is meant by civilization, maintaining that a race which builds permanent structures, engages in vegetation management and produces clothing cannot really be called primitive. So then the sad reality is that the belief that Aboriginal people were mere hunter-gatherers has been used as a political tool to justify dispossession. This book is a game changer and Pasco writes that we ignore the evidence of Aboriginal people's connection and management of the land at our peril. Which, when we think about drought and the catastrophic bushfires that are currently raging, are proving it's a very factual book, which sounds obvious, so it can seem a bit dry in places, but it's riveting and I have to say confronting. I was sh shocked at how little I knew and how I know. There is kids version, Young Dark Emu, and also a two-part series in the offing. I think this book belongs on the syllabus. Now, Dark Emu is out by Magabala Books, and I bought mine again in Reading St Kilda for $19.99. Now again, that's under $2, so what can a writer buy for under $2? I'll tell you what. Two cans of tomatoes. It'll just be like being a student all over again. Now my third and final book is Stone Girl by Eleni Hale. It's a young adult book about 13 year old Sophie who is catapulted from a troubled home life into the maze and dysfunction of state foster care. What happens to her changes her as she goes from one home to another and we follow her from about age 13 to 17 years of age and we see the changes that take over here her and why. The reader witnesses the realism of Sophie's decline from a dedicated student to a truant drug addict who's in an abusive relationship, all because of a broken system. Now, the writer has been through the foster care system and this resonates through the pages of Stone Girl. It gives such a rare insight into the world I knew so little about. This is the first young adult book I have read as an adult and I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. The content was astounding, but it's also a fantastic book in its own right because Hale is such a fine writer who understands plot, structure and character. And Sophie is utterly believable and having her as the first person narrator puts the reader squarely on her side. Even when the reader's heart is breaking for Sophie and we want to shout at her about some of the choices that she is making, but we have this absolutely clear-eyed view of why she is doing the things she is doing. Well, I wanted to shout, no, you're in danger. 
but we also see that it's inevitable. Now, I've read a number of reviews that say that Stone Girl is not a book for younger readers because it's too confronting and they wouldn't encourage anyone under 15 to read it and I totally disagree. I would have loved this book when I was 14 and I don't think 13 is too young at all. Hale has written a really important book and one that is also engrossing as well. It was the 2019 Readings Young Adult book and it's out by Penguin. Would make a great Christmas gift for a young friend or relative. I bought my copy from Reading St Kilda, oh my God, for $19.99. Now, what can you get for that? Well, I'll tell you what. 70% dark chocolate. Now, normally you probably couldn't afford to buy this, but it was on special. So there you go. You can enjoy that and stay up late and keep writing. So they are your three books for, oh, three books for this time around. That's six books down, 20 to go. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel or meet me on Facebook at 30 Books and next time here's a little teaser for you. I've got some more non-fiction. I think this is sci-fi or a bit spooky and some rural romance. So goodbye from 30 Books and see you next time.